All right, we're going to make a digital elevation model, or we're going to download uh, digital elevation data from the USGS and merge it into a usable uh, DEM, both at 10 meters and at 30, 30 meters. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Google Earth. And this is uh, assuming you already have um, the UGET software that will compress everything into a nice uh, zip file for us. So, unless you already know the extents of where you're going to draw your DEMs, like you already know the coordinates or landmarks, it's best to refer to a surface area, or a, yeah, a surface area for where the uh, survey is being done. In this case, these red boxes are the area for where the new gravity data is going to be acquired. And you can see there's a bouquet or a, a gravity map overlay as well. That's from the older data from Louis and Abbott. So we're going to draw our 10 meter DEM at five meter extents outside of our survey area. Now there's two ways, well, there's more than two ways, um, but the two ways that I'm familiar with uh, are both valid and have their advantages and disadvantages. So I'm going to show you the way that I like to do it. But first, let me refer to the other way that some people like to do it. For either one, you're going to need this ruler. It's on the menu on Google Earth. And you're going to draw your extents out or measure your extents out. So draw. And there's five kilometers right there. The way, the other way to do it that works just as well is you keep your cursor here, and then you're going to refer down to the bottom right corner of Google Earth, right where it says imagery date. And you're going to look at the coordinates, which they have in degrees. You're going to write that coordinate down. And once you write the coordinate down, you can take another measurement on another side of the block as an extent. So let's say I would click right here. I'd measure up. There's five kilometers again, ish. You don't have to be exact. As long as you're at five or greater, you'll be fine. So again, I'm at 5.28, and I'm going to refer down to the bottom right corner and write down those coordinates. And I'd repeat that again for the other two sides of our survey square. Once I wrote those down, I would go to the USGS website, which I have right here, and I'd enter my coordinates. X max, X min, Y max, Y min. So X is your easting. So your furthest east and your furthest west coordinate, your furthest east will be your X max. Your furthest west will be your X min. And your Y values are your northing. So your Y max is your furthest north and your Y min is your furthest south. If you were to populate or add to map, you'd get a nice little square right around the survey area that we're looking for. But since we don't necessarily need it to be super precise, because the data available on USGS isn't going to be limited exactly to the area that we are providing the coordinates for or the KML file for. So it's okay if you're a little rough, as long as you know the data you're getting extends further than the five kilometer minimum we're trying to obtain. 
Now, the way that I like to do it is that I just make a mental note. Uh, this five kilometers is right below Spanish Springs. And then maybe I'd look at Patrick over here and say that's about five kilometers maybe. And yeah, a little more, which is fine. So I have Spanish Springs, Patrick, and then from VC Highlands, I'm gonna go down to, yeah, Virginia City. Spanish Springs, Patrick, Virginia City, and then one more extent out here. And I think maybe Boca. Boca maybe about five kilometers out. And seven, 7.2, 7 not a big deal. From here, now that I have my landmarks or my texts that I'm making a mental note of, Boca, Spanish Springs, Patrick, and Virginia City, I'm going to go up here and create or add a polygon. So I'm gonna click on add a polygon. This is gonna be my 10 meter DEM Reno. And I'm not gonna click okay yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to the corner of roughly where I mentally mapped out. So I have Spanish Springs and Boca. Perfect. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna hold, click and hold, and then I'm gonna draw my extents down to Boca, down to Virginia City roughly, straight across over to Patrick, up from Patrick, Spanish Springs, and across. It's not pretty, but it's what we need. It's the, it has an extent at five or greater kilometers for our 10 meter DEM. I don't need the ruler. And then I'm going to save that, and it should uh, add a layer right here. Great. We're going to do the same thing, but at 167 kilometers for uh, the 30 meter DEM. And this one you need to draw your extents out uh, fairly, fairly far because we pretty much go up to like Black Rock, down to Yosemite, and this one's not super clear. But we'll go back to our ruler here, and we're gonna click right outside the survey area and extend out 167 minimum. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm right at Winnemucca. I'll go to that second N. So I have Winnemucca in my head. I'm gonna draw another extent here, right below Black Rock, okay? And then another extent past Chico. We will call it the B in Red Bluff. And then we're gonna go down to this bottom one and Yosemite. So I have Black Rock the B in Red Bluff, the second N in Winnemucca, and Yosemite. That's where I'm gonna draw these extents. I'm gonna add another 30 meter DEM Reno. Okay, so again, I'm gonna to go to the corner of where I wanna draw my extent. So I know I'm at Black Rock, I'm at Red Bluff, Yosemite, and the second N in Winnemucca. So I'm gonna draw that. Draw down, and yeah, it's hard to draw a straight line with your mouse, apparently. Winnemucca, Black Rock. Okay, and that's my 30 meter DEM. Perfect. So there's my 10 meter, oops. There's my 10 meter. Here's my 30 meter. I don't know if I mentioned this already, but this is gonna be used to create our terrain grid in Oasis Montage so that we can do a terrain correction so that we can perform our complete bouquet. So we have our 10 and our 30, and that's pretty much all we're gonna need now with Google Earth, but we do need to save these to a file so that we can 
import them to the USGS website and get our DEM data that we need to merge together. So I'm going to right click on 10 meter DEM, save place as, and you want to save it as a KML. There's KMZ and KML. We want KML. This is our 10 meter and make sure you save it to the right place. 10 meter new. new and we're going to save it. We're going to do the same thing with our 30 meter. Make sure we save it to the 30. And I like to have underscores for save files. And make sure it's KML and save. Right. So now we don't need Google Earth. What we're going to do now is we're going to pull up the USGS website, which is just right up here. And we're going to upload a KML. And we're going to do this twice because we have two separate KMLs. So our first KML file is going to be our, well, we can do our 30 meter first, 30 meter new. And there it is. That's the extent of what we need to merge a 30 meter DEM. So from here, you're going to uh, go down to one arc second. That is 30 meter resolution. And that's going to be our regional terrain or our regional DEM. And this is under elevation products. As you can see, none of these are clicked right now, but we just want one arc second. We want it in a uh, geo tiff. And we're going to search products, see what we get. Now, the downside to this more crudely drawn uh, extent is that for whatever reason, you'll get DEM data that doesn't touch the border of what we're looking for. So I have to zoom out here and then you can kind of see where the data is that we're highlighting. We don't need any of this. So I'm not gonna add any of these, well, I'm gonna add this to the cart. So anything that falls within my grid, that red box, I'm going to add to my cart. So none of these are in my grid. This one is, that one is, and it's probably just gonna go uh, further west as we keep doing this. And this is gonna be uh, you know, a fairly large file. So I'm gonna continue to make sure I'm getting the grid that I want, but I'm going to cut um, a lot of this out because you don't need to me, you don't need to see me go through each one individually. So I will cut here and I'll be back with the second half.